And boys and girls, what's going on? What's happening, folks? What is happening? I know I saw a little something, something on that bicycle seat, girl. Yes, sir. What y'all got going on, man? Hmm? <laughs> yeah, man. <clears throat> so we got that, um. Jarrell Miller versus uh, Lucas Brown fight coming up, man. I think it's going to be a spectacle. You know what I'm saying? I don't think neither one of those... See, this is the thing with Jarrell Miller. Like, a lot of people were saying, like, oh, his engine and this and the third. The dude was throwing pity pats. You know what I'm saying? He was throwing pity pats. All right, let's, 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 let's keep it real. He was throwing pity pats. Um... You know, so that's how he was able to last in a lot of those fights longer than like, you know, people were saying that as far as like, you know, all the drugs and stuff like that. I don't know how much that they did. They uh, I don't know how much them drugs really played a role endurance rise. You know what I'm saying? Because at some point he was going to have to stop taking them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Or or he thought maybe he thought it was just that good, but neither one of these fighters have the best of uh of stamina as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? And nobody was able to really push big uh Jarrell Miller. You know, nobody was able to push him back. Nobody was able to uh to really make him have to work in a fight to where I can get a good uh Synapse, I can get a good, you know, data off of whether or not his, his stamina. Now, all them drugs and shit like that, you know, like I said, I'm not going back looking them up. I'm not, I'm not trying to figure out this in the third with them. I'm not trying to do none of that. Only thing I know is, is that <clears throat> Lucas Brown and him is about to fight. Now, there was a fight with Lucas Brown. I forget who it was supposed to be. Uh, Daniel DeBoer, I believe. That fight was supposed to happen. And Triple BOC said, ooh, almost cleaned her. Almost, damn, she got ass to. I would have I jumped out and gave her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Anyways, that fight was supposed to happen, right? And it didn't happen. Because the Triple BOC was saying he was too old. Which... I think that's, I, I think really to tell you the truth, you know, that's real fishy to me. And the reason why it's real fishy to me is because there's been people over the age of 45 that has fought. That has fought in, in the UK. Now all of a sudden is Lucas Brown, his age is a, uh, is a factor. But then what the triple BOC goes and does is they play, they put on complete mismatch, mismatches to where fighters literally get fucking hurt bad in the ring and and uh lucas brown is coming off of a a knockout win you, you know what i'm saying so the abilities for him to protect himself and the ability abilities for him as far as offensive wise and being able to get rid of his opponents and having an actual bona fide shot at winning a match is a lot higher than a lot of the fights that the triple BOC I'm talking about the mismatches that they make and the mismatches that we now now another thing let's look at Tommy Fury opponents have been put in the ring with Tommy Fury why they was put in the ring to be made a spectacle a knockout win for Tommy Fury and what the triple BOC do uh Danny the boy fought I give them a fat flat out F F and, and Adam going around them plates. Yeah. Yeah. Cars registered. Now, now with the whole, uh, the reason why I say I give them an F, and I'm going to tell you, it, it do seem fishy. It do seem like somebody set something up and said, hey, let's go ahead and get Lucas Brown out of the way so we can make another fight. Even though, Daniel DeBois ain't going I think it's Daniel DeBois who's supposed to fight. I could be wrong. 
But Daniel DeBoy ain't fighting nobody no time soon anyways. And the reason why Daniel DeBoy ain't fighting nobody no time soon anyways because of his fucking Achilles. His Achilles, they what they they called it a um they called it a uh severe injury or I forget what the, how the news articles uh put it, but they said it in such a way that it was gonna be a while for him to to get back right. And with those Achilles injuries, man, you know, if fighters, if, if the athlete or the person don't do what they're supposed to do, medically speaking wise, you know, they can only make make it worse. You know what I'm saying? Look at David Hay. Could only make it worse. You know what I'm saying? Or it could have been like the surgery itself and shit like that. And, you know, it could have been multiple things. So, I mean, uh, trying to make him the point of what I'm trying to say when I don't know really what's going on with him. But, but my prediction for this fight, right? My, pr my prediction for this fight is that it's not going to go to distance. It's not going to go to distance. Whoever gasses out first is, is going night night. You know what I'm saying? Whoever gasses out first is going night night. You know, Jarrell Miller is 300 and something, 336 pounds. Lucas Brown is 277. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, let's keep it real. They're both heavier than what they supposed to, than what they supposed to be. They both seem like they not, not quite in, in in the best of shape. You know what I'm saying? If the shape was, if 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 if, if they needed to come in the shape of round, then they would be okay. But they, but that's not the case. The case literally is that I don't think neither one of these dudes is in the is nowhere near close of the best shape of their fucking boxing career. But both of these guys are at are in a uh, predicament. You know? They're at a predicament. You know? Bruce Gas was happening. Folks said said fights ago about Lucas Brown is that they tired of seeing that shit. Because his inability his defense his defense and, and his cardio game. You know what I'm saying? His ability to protect himself in the ring. You know what I'm saying? After the, the, the four, fifth, sixth round. Because he doesn't come in he doesn't come in shape. And now he's 277 pounds. Jarrell Miller is 300 and 300 and something. He 300 and something. Right? 316, something like that. You know what I'm saying? 336, 316, something like that. And people are questioning whether or not his stamina, his win, his win pipes. I'm telling y'all, man, it's, it's not gonna be. A, it's not. Gonna, I don't think this fight is gonna be a, a um, the fight to be to look forward to. But I think a lot of people are looking at this fight because if they want to see what Jer Jarrell Miller can do and to see if their assumptions was right about those PEDs. You know what I'm saying? Substance was writing about them PEDs. You know? But I don't I don't I don't really care about them damn PEDs uh, to a certain extent because he got caught. He did his time. You know, off to off to better and bigger fights for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? My my main thing what I'm talking about is, is, is that how this fight gonna go down? How these two look? They know they're not looking pretty good. I just I, I'm just gonna keep it, keep it like that. That's that's a lot of weight between those guys going into the ring. Down there, almost 600 pounds, probably 700 pounds going into this fight in that ring. That's a lot of fucking weight. You know what I'm saying, and and I don't understand. I, 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 you know, the whole aspect of, of coming to a fight in shape, man, for for some of these fighters, 
has been out the window. We've seen it time and time again, fighters getting in there and not in shape. You know, not in shape. I understand there's things that go down and stuff like that, but some of these fighters, they don't need to work a, a, a second job, a, 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 a job. They don't need to work a second and third job. Their job is boxing. You wake up in the morning. You wake up in the morning. In the gym. Well, well, what else is there to do? That people be taking. Um, outside of competition. Because ain't no way in the world. We see these people all throughout the whole fucking year. Going to the gym. Sparring. And doing this and doing that. And they can't make it out of the fucking sixth round. It's complete bollocks. <laughs> this is a shame. Yo fucking main job is boxing. And you can't even come in in shape. But you won't. Oh man, I think that old dude about the bunk. Gonna see if you all right. We're gonna see if that old dude all right. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna sit up over here. Let me go see if this old dude is okay. That's how you do it, man. That's how real, real people. You all right? He asked me if I was going into town. Nah, I ain't going over there. Ooh. I'm not going into town. Well, I just left. I'm going over there. But you know when you see some some old timer man, is 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 he's he hunched over with his hands on his knees. It's hot outside. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to make sure the dude wasn't dying, man, because I feel real bad if I just pass somebody up on the side of the fucking road and they fucking, I hear about they fucking die. That'd be fucked up. That'd be fucked up, man. I know a lot of people passed this dude up, you know, on the highway. I know they seen him. You know, you got to take care of these, these old people, man. Oh, so, yeah. You got the bus, too. You just got to hit that stop. Yeah, man, but Jarrell Miller, man, and uh, Lucas Brown, they, they do not look in <laughs> Shit, they out of shape, boy. They out of shape. Told you the bus coming. Told you. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm telling y'all, man, Jarrell Miller going to be throwing a whole bunch of PD pads. Throwing a whole bunch of PD pads. But this is a good fight for him, though. This is a good fight for him, though. A good comeback fight. Only reason why it's a good comeback fight because if um, if he looks halfway decent to get this dude out of here, because remember he got rid of that uh, was it not was it Junior Fire or, or, or whoever? He got rid of that youngin. He got rid of that. He got rid of that uh, that one dude. So that's that's pretty good. And um, so if, if Drell Miller can get. Can knock out Lucas Brown in spectacular fashion because for either fighter if this fight goes the distance well Lucas Brown if it goes the distance it, it is what it is you know what I'm saying but if Jarrell Miller allows this fight to go to the distance then you know I think what he should do is just go go straight into a fat camp go straight to a fat camp and don't show up, don't, don't talk about no fights until you can make it into the 200s. At least the 200s. You know, being being 300 and something pounds and eating cheeseburgers and shit like that and and uh, uh, trying to turn it around and make it as something else, you know, try to laugh at it. You know, there's health concerns with being that fucking big. You know what I'm saying? So, and especially on top of when we found out he was taking a, a cocktail of a PEDs, that's why some people out here call him Big Pharmacy. So, you know, it should not go. Why are you pumping your brakes? It's 55, but come on. 
got a Dodge Charger and you ain't and you ain't it's 55 come on and you pumping your brakes I tell you what these people around here boy uh, WBC what do you say uh, Adari uh, pennant says WBC plus WBA should join forces team up merge partner work together and make a heavyweight belt and call it WBCA nah I, th I think what they should do is get their head out of their their asses that's what they should do in my opinion I think they should get their head out of their asses and I think what they I think what these folks should do is is um uh, when it comes to these these um undisputed matchups I think that's when they should join forces and force these people to be to, to uh, fight for undisputed or get rid of the or drop the belts that's what they should do they should order purse bids for this shit or drop the fucking belts it's, it, waiting too long around these streets for these dudes to get it on damn near negotiating for six months and uh, and nobody knows what's gonna happen you have all these mandatories around here and then you got you hear at each each stage when folks think the getting is good and when one side thinks they're about to have a fight they get more demands thrown at them somebody needs to put their big boy pants on and this is just my opinion put their fucking big boy pants on and force these dudes to fight uh I, I, Adari Pennant, UFC is pointless because UFC is pointless because they knock uh, out a lot of people with their hands. Might as well do boxing and make big. Nah, they can't though. <laughs> That's the thing. They got them little bitty ass gloves on, and the way they strike in the UFC, they can't do that same striking in boxing. That's the reason why every time somebody, some some UFC fighter. Over there, the only thing about Francis Nagano is, is that he. Has but every time we see somebody that comes from the UFC, boxing, it doesn't work out well for him. It doesn't work out. The, the gloves are bigger. The striking is different. Uh, Dari Pundit said, "Can heavyweight boxing be popular like NFL, basketball, baseball? If it was pushed, it, it was at one point." boxing was at one point the thing the thing that I always say is that you got to keep you got to keep good fights and good cards circulating if, if you're not giving the fans a good product they're going to go they're not going to pay for it they're not going to pay for it I bet you if you put on a boxing match in any bar in America turn it on the TV watch and see how many people are going to be watching watch and see how many people will be watching all the you put on you put on you put on how would you want to say this if you put on a half decent the main event on tv in a bar watch how many people was going to be watching that tony harrison and charles fight I was watching it in a bar on a big ass motherfucking screen. The party didn't start until the fight was over. People that didn't even know boxing or who was fighting, didn't even know was watching. Was going, ooh, ah, get him. He fucking him up, dropping them motherfucking bees on him. You know what I'm saying? People want to watch boxing, the thing about Nobody knows what's a good fight or a bad fight or what they should pay for or what they shouldn't pay for. Let alone. What the fuck is this? Let alone a lot of these these everything is it's 2022. It's a new age in how you market fights and fighters. And I don't think a lot of these people know how to do it. And I'm talking about ESPN and Showtime. I don't think they really know how to do it. Because if we look at the way Edward Hearn does it, then we look at the way the, the, the zone does it, 
Then we look at how the way ESPN and Showtime does it. Night and day. Night and day. See? When the zone came up over here, they, they had they, they had people that had masters and doctor's degree and and um and social media. They knew how to work. And they, they knew how to, to do the spreadsheets and the analytics and to see how they can engage certain demographics and how to reach out to them. Which they did a good job at it. They just couldn't provide the fucking fights. Look at ESPN and Showtime. There used to be a time to where you couldn't turn on the TV. You couldn't go down the fucking street without knowing if a, if a fight like Ryan Garcia and Tate Davis is going to happen. They called in it. How much money is they really spending? On marketing. I think they're being robbed. I think they're being robbed. No way in hell. No fucking way. And H-E double L hockey sticks. No way in hell. They spending two million, um, a million dollars. Two million dollars to market this fight. In America. No way in hell. That's what I'm trying to tell folks, man. You, there's no, there's makes no absolute sense. That's why I don't believe that that ESPN and Showtime be taking 50 percent of the pay-per-view earnings because because besides besides doing a a, a, a bullshit ass all access, which be really fucked up because they don't really whoever put those together suck, right? Whoever put those all axes are behind the gloves. Whoever put those together suck. They're ass cheeks. They don't give no no, no boxing fan any type of insight on, on anything worth a damn. You know? They don't. So uh Adari Pennant said PBC and top rank should just join forces team up merge partnership work together they do be working together nobody needs to take their business nobody wants to take their business and just join the partnerships when they know that both sides have agendas they, they have agendas and milestones whatever you want to call it that they want to accomplish and it might not go hand in hand with the other person you know and then every time you do partnerships, you have to also think that what is the other side doing to in good faith and order to keep this partnership up. So now you that's another person you gotta trust. And a lot of people don't don't trust a lot of people. And a lot of people out here that's promoters or advisory programs and stuff like that, they have been done dirty by by people. So why why would they want to join a partnership? You know? Why would they want to? You know? The PBC and Top Rank, they have enough fighters. To, and they have fighters that they need to make. That they, they have fighters. They have the right amount of fights that they can make. That the fans want to see. But are they, will they do it? Is the question. Will they make them? You know, because a lot of times, you know, they keep fights in their back pocket, right? A lot of times that they crunch their numbers and they don't feel like the uh, the fight has reached the ceiling yet. There's all kind of things, but the reason why some of these fights don't happen, and nine times out of ten. When you see these big fights, it ain't got nothing to do with what promotion or brand you with. It has everything to do with ego. Ego. 
Ego, egos is the main reason why a lot of these fights ain't happening. Ego. Prime example. Prime example. When a fighter has three of the belts or he's undisputed or or uh or uh he just got a bag, how he treats his 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 uh his uh contemporaries, how they treat each other. That's a prime example. It seems like every time somebody gets undisputed or gets a bag or gets a belt, all of a sudden they, they, they become Mr. Businessman. It got to make sense. Right? That's why, that's why, that's why you, that's why these, that's why to this, that's why now in 2023 folks are saying what? The belts don't matter. They say it, they say it, in my opinion, this is just me. They're saying the belts don't matter. They're saying the belts don't matter because fans are going to pay for what they want to see. Right? Fans are going to pay for what they, what they want to see. And And there, there's nothing saying, there's nothing saying in the in the history of boxing. There's nothing saying that a fight with no belts can't make five million dollars, can't make six million dollars, can't make money. When Dillian White fights, when Dillian White fights up over here in the UK, look how many people in the stands. And they do pretty decent numbers. They probably make six. They probably generate about ten million dollars for that fight. From from the uh, from the um, the gate and broadcast. Then you have that's just in the UK. But then you have to think about uh, the money that comes in from every all across the fucking world, outside of the UK. So, and then look at Tank Davis. Whether or not if he had a belt or not. Whether or not if Tank Davis had a fucking belt or not, people are going to show up to watch him fight when he fights somebody that's worth a fucking damn worth watch, right? Am I lying? People are going to buy into the pay-per-views. Am I lying? Right? So when they do, do when they do that, when fighters are getting paid, I don't think it's you know, yeah, this is this is underneath the. Underneath the house, yeah, that's my that's my wheels right there on the water. That's my wheels, that's my wheels. Let me show y'all where. Let me show you the outside shower, man. Let me show you where you're in the shower at sometimes. Yeah, this is a utility spot up over here. This is where I will be taking the shower at sometimes on the hot days. I just come right up over here and get up get up in the shower right here, man. Be nice and nice and cozy. With the pool on the back. I don't know if y'all can see it. Yeah pool back there yeah I think I need to put some water in there let me see let me see where it's at I think I need to dump some more water in there let me see yeah I could turn it on a bit yeah let me turn turn her on yeah man make sure it's going in there Okay. Yeah, man. Oh, he said uh Big Baby Miller and uh and uh Dillian White be fireworks. I mean, not right now. Not right not right now. Um you know, Jarrell Miller, he got to he need to get he need to he need he need to he need to get below 200 in my opinion. In my opinion, unless he gets Below 200, it ain't it, it ain't really it ain't really worth the damn for him to fight somebody that's on on his, you know that could be possibly on his level, you know it doesn't make any sense for that, it it, it doesn't, because if he go up in there and gets uh and gets washed out because of his inability to lose weight and get in shape, it's gonna be it ain't, it ain't gonna be worth it. 
It ain't going to be worth it. Florida's finest. What's going on, Sir Foul Player of Brooklyn? What's happening? I'm going to show y'all uh, my, my new uh, addition to my, uh, to my little gat. Show you my new addition to my gat. I had to get a uh bought this new little uh new little uh piece for my gat. Yeah, give me a second. <clears throat> yeah, man, I'm renting this uh this studio apartment over here because because I want to save money over here in Florida, man. I want to save some money, so in order for me to save some money. I got to uh, rent this studio because Florida Keys is expensive. So let me show you all this new, well, <clears throat> two of the things I got, right? Right, uh, well, I can't show you all of it. Just going to show you. Uh, so I got this doohickey right here. I don't know if you see it. It's a, uh, you know. So, let me show you. Let me show you. Because one, hold on, let me take this part off, man, because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to blow my, uh, my spot up. So, let me, uh, do something real quick. I don't think I can. I'll figure out how to do that later. Anyways, I'm just going to show you a little bit how it works here. So, so on this particular gun, I had added this piece. Oh, let me hit, let me hit the light. <clears throat> let me hit the light. So I added this new doohickey. I don't know if you can kind of see it. You can see it right here on the bolt release. So, so you won't have to press this. To lock the bolt for you don't have to press that anymore right so so all you do to when you knock the bolt for it is you take your finger like that boom bolt goes forward just press it down then if you want to lock it you just hold that up then you can you can lock it but nice little 15 dollar piece you know, as you can see, nice little AR I got, nice little optic, nice little optic you get on it, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, you know, when you get you get a couple dollars, you know what I'm saying, you can get you a little gat, you know, you know, uh, Call it what you want to. <laughs> Call it what you want to, but we got them clackers over here. Yeah, I threw the piece on myself. I'm about to um I got some AR parts coming in. I'm about to build my own. So I'm about to build my own. Uh, I got the uh, what did I buy so far? I got the uh, the upper receiver. I got the upper receiver. I got the uh I got the upper receiver and the boat coming in um, sometime uh, next week. So I got all that stuff because I figured I could build my own AR with the specifications that I want, right? Specifications that I want. And uh, and uh, I go I go with a certain key parts that, that are fairly cheap, like the... Um, the, the uh, lower receiver, I'm not going with an expensive barrel. Uh, I'm not going with an expensive rail or anything like that. So, <clears throat> so I can, I, so basically it's going to cost me about $900 to build myself, but <clears throat> I get the upper receiver that I want and I get, uh, I get the upper receiver that I want and then I get the, uh, the uh the, the boat that I want and then the the uh this upper receiver boat oh yeah and uh drop in trigger yeah so saw some some rubbish out here 
Yeah, so back to uh, Big Pharmacy Miller, like people like to call him, man. Oh, that's a lizard. The, the dude, the dude is off the chain, man. You know, to, uh, to uh, be coming to a fight that heavy, man. Coming into a fight that fucking heavy. That's fucking ridiculous. You know, but you can't, you can't, uh, you know, you can't stop a man for doing, <laughs> being destructive to himself. You know, obviously, you know, he, he uh, has some cocktail of PEDs in the system. So you can't stop. You can't stop. A, uh, I found this in the motherfucking street. I see that shit. Found that in the motherfucking street. What is this? Hands and friends. I don't know what the fuck that is. It's going in the trash. All right? Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, he, I don't. I don't know what the fuck these some of these cats be, be thinking, man. You know, cause what happens if this dude lose? What happens if he loses? You know, what happens if he goes in there and gets and gets knocked out? Like, where does he go to from there with his career? You know, and it all could have been, and, and it all stems with. Uh, what they say, hard work and dedication, and it all starts with that. What happens if he loses? You know, that's the real aspect of it. Because losing to Lucas Brown, come on, bro, that that is that would be absolute devastating if I was him. That would be, that would be absolutely devastating if I was him. I gotta pay this this bill. It'd be absolutely devastating because, dude, I tell y'all, man, this, um, this boxing shit, now I'm just getting this mail, put it in, uh, that's Levante, put it up over here, yeah, that's, it's just, that would be absolutely devastating because where is he going to go from there, you know, woo. Where's he gonna go from there if he loses? <laughs> For real. Where are you gonna go? If, if he loses against Lucas Brown, where's he gonna go? He, he, he's gonna get some fights, but is is for one, it's definitely gonna it's definitely gonna tell everybody uh it's definitely gonna tell everybody it was <laughs> them drugs. Mm-hmm. Second. Second. Who's gonna pick him up? And then what kind of fight he gonna be able to get next? After that. You know? What kind of fight he gonna be able to get after that? Let's go see how warm the water is. Belly is kind of full, so I'm gonna ask the landlord about this damn boat because it's just they it got a fairly new engine on it, but maybe only a little, little nine horsepower. But but you know, something to get out there in the flats or whatever. But you can fit about three people in there easy, maybe four. But uh, yeah. Damn iguana shit right there. Fucking iguana shit. You can't smell it, which is a good thing. Because of all this damn chlorine. You can smell the chlorine, but... Yeah. Damn. This little dude. Keep one to... Here we go. I don't know what that does. It maybe, like, skims the top and picks up some of the stuff off the surface. I don't know. But it shouldn't be right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it. Then I'm going to. There we go. Put it over there. Yeah. I'm just putting some more water in it. Because it's supposed to be uh, a half an inch above that first step. Mm-hmm. So. And the water. 
No, it's not too cold. It's very spoonful water. Very spoonful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go back to Big Pharmacy Miller. You know he lose this fight, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, besides the shit. Yeah, I just wait till it dries first. And then I'll, I'll kick it out the way. Once it really, like, really dries, then I'll kick it out the way. I'm not gonna fucking pick that shit up and smear it all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Not gonna pick it up and smear it. Smear it all over the place, so. Yeah, man. He gonna have to um do some things. Cause I don't even know who really gonna fuck with him. You know, cause look where he's fighting at. What, what, Dubai or something like that? Because he fucked up big time. So I don't even know who's gonna who who's really gonna pick him up. <sighs> you know, after he did what he did. You know what I'm saying? And then plus, plus, like, is there any drug testing for this damn thing? Well, I'm pretty sure he, since he was suspended, he still got to do something. Damn drug testing, man. Pop for something. I want to make sure that I have uh, enough trans. Twice he fucked up. So, so, mm-hmm. We don't even know they day. Yeah.